All right. It's Danny Cage here for the Danny Cage Show. I'm uh, taking this one uh, mobile right about now. I'm actually driving to training. Been a super busy day. I want to preface this show with letting you know I did not watch NXT last night. Uh, I just didn't have time. Uh, I saw some of it, you know, some of the uh, matches, but I didn't get to see the entire show. I was, you know, usually what I do is the day of the show, uh, Wednesday Night Wars, I will watch both shows. Oh, yeah, guys, if you hear uh, some noise, it's like I said, it's because I'm driving. So you'll hear the the turn signal, the horn, probably me yelling at somebody or two. But um, I'm just driving right now with my headset on, uh, on my way to training and, tr- and trying to maximize my time. So, like I said, I usually watch both shows at the same time, channel flipping. And that's what I did last night. So when I say I didn't see the show, I didn't see the show in its entirety because what I do is the next day I will watch both shows separately. So I only had a chance to watch uh, AEW in its entirety today. And, man, uh, last week I gave it, a I think, a B or a B plus. And, man, uh, stellar improvements, uh, great flow to the show good opening i i loved it uh i i i'm not gonna tell you my grade right now but top to bottom uh production wise match wise story wise stuff like that i thought it was a very good very good utilization of time character stuff weaving the stories the only thing i will say is and I was thinking about this. There's a lot with the with the uh, inner circle and with Cody and them guys. But I think it was just, what was it, Kenny and Dean. And then, like, I didn't really see any other stories being built uh, character-wise. Um, I liked the opening match. And, I, and And when I say this, I didn't like the match so much. I liked the story of the match, uh, the underdog story. Uh, I thought that was really good. I like the effect of having the other wrestlers in the tournament watching it. thought that was good. Plus, like I said uh, last night, uh, we never explained why that other tag team was at the dark... Uh, you know, I, guess I don't even know who they are. Like I said... They, they don't mention it. They they don't show anything. Um, I'll just call them the dark, the dark tag team. You, they have them, and then like, why'd they get a first round by? And who are they? I think they should have spotlighted the tag teams a little bit more. I prefer a tag team. I would prefer the whole tournament taking place in one night, or a couple matches at least in a night, or the first round in a night. Uh, I thought it was very. Uh, I thought it was a very uh, good storied match. A little uh, inexperience showed. Uh, I thought, you know, they got that sharpshooter on, and I think he climbed to the, he went to the ropes way too quick on both occasions. And I don't, I don't care. Like somebody can go, oh, well, they were in a rush because of this or that. Well, then you cut something else out. Because that moment there of just inching over and inching over and inching over and making that rope grab is uh, I think the tells a story more than like a 450 and stuff like that yeah so like uh, I didn't see a comment I didn't see them winning it I figured the Bucks would run with it but I guess they wanted to just uh, help make this tag team and I thought it was cool them celebrating in a crowd afterwards good feel to it What I feel, though, is happening with this crowd, and they're going to burn themselves out. And I know it's not the same crowd all the time, people, but I'm just saying the the feel, um, it reminds me of, let me see how I can explain this without, because I'm trying not to, I I don't want to come off like I'm burying anybody or negating what they're doing, because I think what AEW is doing is awesome. But what you have with this crowd 
is um, it reminds me of like you're watching something with your friends and you're putting it over so huge so they know it's cool. Because, like, there were certain things in that match where I was just like, ooh, that wasn't so good. Uh, you know, there was one part where one of the Young Bucks got pushed and, like, the guy didn't push him and fall through enough. So, like, he had to, like, walk all the way across the ring and then, like, collide with his brother. And, like, the crowd goes, ooh, like, it was, like, devastating. But, it, like, it, it looked all, it came off awful on TV. Um, so, like, that just reminds me of, like, somebody, like, I don't know, like overselling something being fantastic when it really wasn't. And I think the crowd might burn out on that later. But, man, I thought the flow of the show was so much better. The only thing I would say is, again, with the promo before the promo or the segment before the segment, I didn't like the, the thing with best friends. And then all of a sudden they go to the promo. And then there's just the thing with Orange Cassidy. And then the lights went out. So it like it made you believe like there was going to be like a run in or or something was going to happen, um, and uh, you know Jr. wasn't filled in on it, and you know and and I think like they got a it's just like a little little tiny thing with with production where they just have to like uh, inform them hey we're going to go to the Orange Cassidy and then throw it right to our next matchup. So like right when you put that you know thumb up, it should have been like all right we're going to go to you know. Spears versus Moxley right now, you know, something like that. It was, um, because the lights went out and I was like, oh boy, what's going on? And plus, if you're going to have the lights go out later in the night, I just wouldn't have done it for that promo for his entrance. I would have done something different for his entrance. Um, what else? What else was I going to say? Because I, I don't have my lights on right now because I'm driving. So I'm going to turn my lights on. This is, okay, so, um, Oh yeah, yeah the uh, the the Jericho entrance with his inner circle. Like I, I was saying yesterday that I don't know if it would work because I don't like a lot of people in the ring at once. And there was times I was distracted, and it was I don't know what it is with people sticking their tongue out and biting their tongues and stuff, and <laughs> distracting the hell out of me, man. And I was like, what is going on? But I thought like Jake just standing there. And being stoic the entire time works. And it worked. And I thought Jericho controlled the crowd great. I thought he shut them down when they were becoming over smarky and uh, really getting into the we the people. And he, 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 he hit exactly all the right notes on what he said about that because it's exactly what would resonate with the crowd. You know, stupid, creative, this, this, and this, which then makes them, the people go, yeah, yeah, we're part of this. this. This isn't stupid like WWE. And that's what they're thinking. That's what that crowd is thinking, even though those that crowd probably still watches WWE and all that stuff. But at that moment, they're, you know, uh, the angry uh, villagers with the pitchforks and the uh, fire. So I like that a lot. Uh, the Inner Circle, that's a cool name. Uh, that's a cool name. I, I wasn't expecting that, but I think... What else worked was, like, that music and that entrance. And I'm glad that Sammy's not wearing the panda anymore. Um, I, I just thought that worked really well. The whole promo told the story. Uh, and like I said, he, he controlled the crowd. Uh, so uh, what else did I have here? Oh, yeah, at the end, I didn't like uh, Jake was very stoic the entire time. And then, and then it's going to commercial break, and he starts, like, getting pumped up and jumping around and, and waving his arms. I think he just should have, you know, sat there stoic and then rolled out and left. Uh, I would have I, – I don't like him in, like, the polo shirt. I think he should be, like, in a badass track suit or something like that. Uh, that's just me. Or so, something that fits him better. Like, maybe even, like, an old, like uh, – uh, tracksuit with like a hoodie underneath or something with the hood on. I think that would be pretty badass for him. But it, it just the, uh, the, the the polo shirt does nothing for me. It just it just makes him just look like any other dude on the street, and I don't think that's a good look. Um, I thought the, uh, great use of introducing who Havoc was, his promo playing as he's coming to the ring, because you didn't need to see his entrance. But that promo was great. 
Uh, I love him. I, 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 a lot of people are like, well, he can't wrestle unless he's doing the hardcore stuff. No, he can wrestle. He can go, man. He can go. And I, I thought they had a, a very good match. I liked the ending, the receipt, uh, back to the biting, because that's what Havoc was doing, and the finish. Man, that coffin drop scares the damn out of me. I just, I, it's just a tough way to, to fall. Uh, man, Darby's uh, something else, man, and, and he, I think he's only going to get better. He needs to, uh, he's going to put on some size naturally, uh, and I, I just, I just think it'll be, I think it'll be great. Um, yeah, the, the, um, oh, it's, come on, man. I'm just yelling at, uh, people who don't know how to drive. All right. So, um, I liked, uh, Pac coming down during the, uh, Spears and Moxley match. It made sense. I liked his delivery and him saying like, because this is, this is a point. If wins and losses matter, why isn't? Pack getting a match. Why did Darby and Havoc wrestle for a title match? You know, that's and you got to ask yourself that. Like, they're, they're, you have to be consistent in an inconsistent world. Wrestling is very all over the place, but there has to be parameters, and those parameters were stretched as well in this match because these guys went outside the ring more than they were inside the ring, and you could have counted to fifty uh, numerous times. So you're putting the referee in a tough position with that, um, and you could see that, and you could you could you could see the the ref being uh, messed with because it was just like, okay, now this is a count out, so we're supposed to be playing by the rules and this and that. Oh yeah, I also wanted to say so you know because this is like trying to be like, hey, we're getting back to the roots of wrestling, and uh, you know wins and losses matter and this and that. I was never a fan. Like, back in the day, I think it was Eddie Gilbert, he would say, uh, you know, every woman's dream, every man's nightmares, to, or, you know, stuff like that. And that's fine for being introduced. But, like, I, it didn't help to say, like, the private party, you know, ways, you know, cranberry and vodka and all that stuff. It's just silly. Because um, why introduce anybody's weight if you can say whatever you want? I just, I didn't get that. And it, and it doesn't do anything. Like, I don't go, oh, that's perfect for the character. I don't get it. It does nothing for me. Uh, but they're, they're two great athletes. I think they're only going to get better. Uh, but, yeah, getting back to that thing with with Pac coming out, I thought it was great. Uh, every finish in, these, in this uh, show were good. Like, the finishes made sense. There was finishes being... Uh, foreshadowed and callbacks receipts uh things made sense people were going for stuff and got right out and and went and 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 hit something um you know matches pretty much ended i think in all finishers other than the private party which was uh i believe it was the victory role but I, i i liked the sense of finishes matter and nobody's going to kick out. And I think that escaped the first show, and I think it was hammered home uh, on this one. I, I liked it a lot. I thought the uh, Kenny Kenny Omega coming down with the uh, with the broom and the bat was pretty damn cool, and saying like "pick it up" and all that. And man, that um, that shot from Pac or Pac looked badass. I know he had his hand over it, but the angle was so perfect that it looked like he got trucked and he very might well of. But man, it, I thought it was solid shot. Uh good storytelling. Uh you know, like I like that Moxley was was basically like he could have done whatever he wanted and he didn't. Cuz like he wants to do thing on his terms, you know, he'll go after people. And I think, like, just to, to pick the bones clean isn't really his style for his character. So I think it makes sense for him to drop it and just leave. Uh, I, I, I thought it was good storytelling. And it was good to not see Kenny come out later, you know, putting over the shot and all that stuff. And that's what I was wondering the whole event, which was good, is, is Cody going to come out? 
is Cody going to come out? And I, and I thought that was uh, really, really good. I thought the main event entrance uh, for both teams was good. Uh, um, let me just say this. So, like, I'm going to go into this match because there was a couple mentions of it and there was a mention of it in, sh- in the Spears match. And I know where JR's coming from and, and stuff like that, and I love him. But, like, there is an actual time to mention concussions in pro wrestling. And you know when it is? Never. You never mention concussions in pro wrestling. I'm sorry. You just don't. Um, I just... It's just a no-no word. It's just... I, I, like in football, they'll say it because like someone's going, they're 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 they're, they're putting over that. Hey, he's going to be checked for concussion protocol. He's being taken to the tent. This this and this. But if you're saying that someone might be concussed, and then they're you're, they're they're continuing the match, it's a tough spot to put the wrestlers in and the company in. And I know it's quote unquote not real, but it's still a tough spot. And it's it's one of those it's one of those you know uh, sensitive issues. That you don't want to really be uh, talking about. So I, I would, I would, I would, I would definitely move away from saying concussed and have a concussion and stuff like that as much as possible. So yeah, there's that. Um, but I thought the commentary team was very good. They're starting to gel already. Um, there was really nothing. There's a couple little camera angles here and there that were missed on certain things. Um, but I, I liked overall the, the flow of the show. I thought the main event was even good. Great storytelling in that. Uh, never jobbing out the referee, which was good. But you could hear Sammy tell Jake to get in the ring as he held the ref, but it took a little bit too long to get in the ring. Um, miscommunication or what, but... It, it got to the point where, like, okay, we see where this is going. Now it's your time to get in the ring. And, uh, but that, that was it. That was the only moment that I saw. And, man, Dustin is still going. Like, he can go, go, go. And I think he, he, he'd be best utilized in a tag team. Number one, you get more longevity out of him. Number two, he is a great tag team wrestler. And number three, I think he could help make somebody else. Um, so I think, I think that's where we go. That's where we, that's where he should go with this is, uh, they should go ahead and, uh, find him somebody and, and, and marry them and have them together and be like, you know, he can, he's just so good. I mean, top to bottom, he's just unbelievable. And then to go up and hit that body press, the, the blind body press off the top rope. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I loved it. I love the ending. Uh, you know that elbow. Everybody <laughs> laughs at it, but that 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 uh, elbow freaking works, man. I think it's slick. Uh, I loved the lights out. <laughs> Cody was in the ring. I loved the foreshadowing with uh, MJF, and it looked like, hey, is he going to? And then didn't. It was just all good stuff all the way around. Uh, my one small critique, and it's so small, but it's like, it just made me, it just popped me because I was thinking of it. Um, <laughs> so Darby comes down on a skateboard, which was such a cool effect. Um, I think almost they should have had a camera on him coming out and putting down the skateboard so people could digest what was happening before it even happened. Um, yeah, and you could see like Jericho was either killing time or trying to get the referee out of the way, uh, while still being a heel. And I thought it was awesome. And I love to see like that ring general like that. And, uh, so when he, when Darby tackled him, watch it again. It reminds me of like when, uh, Ralphie tackled the bully, except like Ralphie was like hitting the bully in the face. So like Darby just looked like he was just like. Like almost like a, 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 a an upset kid going after his dad or something. That's what it looked like because he was just like punching him in the stomach instead of like swinging for the fences of his head and stuff. But you know, it, it still worked. Darby's got that that like silent charisma, you know, and that's that's rare. And I don't know if he can cut a great promo or not from what I watched on AEW so far. 
So if he can, awesome. You know, that'd be even better. But right now he's got that silent charisma, that Jeff Hardy silent charisma deal where he doesn't even have to talk and people are drawn to him. And I think that works well there. Like I said, he'll, he'll, he'll get some more size as he gets older and stuff. Um, and he'll figure out that that's what's going to save his career is get some more muscle tone there and, and get a little bit of size. But, man, he's so good. He really is. Um, I thought the ending was good. Uh, you know, just, you know, it hit on everything. It made you want to tune in again. And it's not getting overdone. They're, you're not giving them too much. It's a hit, a hit, boom, a hit, a hit, boom, gone. You know, Jericho does the swarmy heel thing. He doesn't have to go there and try to save his friends. He's he's all about himself. That's that's what the inner circle's about. He surrounded himself with those people, and I and I thought that worked. He grabbed his title, you know, and he went down there and he cut that promo right up the ramp. I thought it was great. Um, it, top to bottom, I, I gave the show an A plus. It really was, it, and it was so much improvement from the week prior. Um, they even when they went to commercials, they explained like we'll be right back, and I think that's key to do. You can't just not throw it back. Um, I, I, and the girls' match was solid. I, I thought everything was really, really good. Uh, the only thing I would have done is I would have maybe done like a highlight of the tag teams, a uh, little thing like that, more backstage stuff. I, I think could be good. Uh, just little vignettes playing in between, but I thought the the Jimmy Havoc promo was perfect, and that's how you can utilize your time to introduce people to new characters that, sure, he's been around, but somebody watching for the first time doesn't know him. So I think that's a really good thing. So, like, going into that match, they put over Darby during the his match. They didn't really need to put over everything about Havoc because they already he already... You know, nailed that point home with his entrance. So top to bottom, I loved it. Uh, it was an A plus match or A plus show. Really well done. Camera angles were good. I, I would just, uh, I like them to stay a little bit tighter. There's just sometimes where they're uh, a little bit too far out, especially like in the tag team matches, and it, it kind of takes away that urgency of what's happening because you can really see there is no danger. If you just ang angle the uh, cameras on tag team matches from corner to corner on the handhelds and keep it there more than going the hard cam wide shot, it helps tell that story better. Um, but, yeah, uh, just, a t uh, you know, the private party, they're, they're going to get better. Uh, this was their coming out party for private party, but they, um, they, did, they did very well, uh, just a little fast. And if they just take that time to sell, sell, sell. And you know how, like, all the old-timers slow down, grab a hold, whatever. But just slow down a little bit. Sell a little bit. Uh, make those movements deliberate. But I thought it was really cool. Um, I'm going to try to check out some of the dark stuff. I haven't seen any of it yet. Like I said, the last couple of days have been super busy. Um, got a lot of meetings going on and some good stuff. Uh, for those who don't know, we... Uh, or on the brink of uh, possibly having a reality show. And uh, I just wanted to spring that news on you guys now. Um, they're in L.A. right now, and it, it, and it's not going to be one of those cheesy quote-unquote reality shows because that was one of the deals when I, saw, when I got optioned uh, a couple years ago. They optioned it because they came and they... Uh, a film crew came. You can watch it on Vimeo. If you look it up on Vimeo, uh, Monster Factory, and it's on Vimeo. It was like an editor's choice pick there, but it was really, really well done piece. And what was really cool about it was like they came out for like a day or two, and they just had all this awesome equipment. And I'm like, so. And they, and the funny thing is, like they called me up and they just said, "Hey, we want to film a documentary on you guys." And I usually, you know, I, I do what I always say. Yeah, come on in, man. We can do this because I don't care. Uh, I, my training's an open book. I don't hide anything. So, but what I said to them is uh, what I usually tell other people that, you know, I don't really know. And then, and I said, if you make us look bad, I will find you and I will kill you. 
and uh, they laughed and they they understood but as i got to know them they were like really quality great guys great hearts and i asked them i said how long is this documentary going to be and they were like oh it's just going to be two minutes i go two minutes the hell are you talking about and I go, yeah it's just going to be like some highlights and we're going to show like what we can do and we're going to use it to like get more work and i was like all right but i think when you're here you're going to uh I think you're going to like it a little bit more, and I think it's going to be longer than two minutes. So, like, they wind up coming here, and it was supposed to be, like, a day or two, two days of training, and that turned into, like, a full week. Then it turned them coming back again and again, and then they put it together, and I think the total was, like, 20 minutes or so. But it's a really good – it makes you feel good about pro wrestling. You watch it, and you go, okay, I can get behind this. This is really cool. Because it shows me being uh, the ass that I can be. But then also I can I, I got my people's backs. And you get to see the students and their struggles and what they go through. Plus there's like really cool guest appearances, you know. Nick Camarado's in there and, and uh, Cody Vance, Vanilla Vance. And there's uh, Abyss is in it. And Congo and, and all kinds of people and... It's just really cool to look at it and, and see everything. And, and Punish, uh, Damian Priest is in it. And it's just really cool. So that's been going on, and that's what's been so what I've been so busy with. Even today, like I was just running around, I, I had to go and get some stuff situated. I got some shopping done, and then, like, I literally watched the AEW uh, at, like, I started, like, maybe, like, almost 6 o'clock, 5.45. So I got finished, dropped in the, jumped in the car. It's like 7.35 now. I'm rolling up to the Monster Factory. We're going to get rock and rolling at 8 o'clock. But I just want you guys uh, to keep uh, subscribing. I'm going to uh, call this episode 4A, and then I'll make an episode 4B where I uh, watch NXT either tonight or tomorrow afternoon and get it up just because I didn't have a chance. But I, 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 I appreciated so much how much... AEW improved and the stories being told and the picture being painted and if they can keep that up I think it's just going to do so much for their product and wrestling in general uh, they got a good nucleus there I couldn't see too much of that on the first show I don't know if it was first day jitters who was in the matches what was going on but I thought every match was good told a good story I thought the endings were good I thought everything, top to bottom, production-wise, was, was good. Little things here and there could have been changed, but not enough where it's going to affect it. So, um, again, I'm heading to the Monster Factory right now. Uh, for those who don't know what the Monster Factory is, we are a professional wrestling school. I am the owner. I was training in the Monster Factory in the 90s. I trained alongside Sheamus and other people like that. Uh, it was owned by Larry Sharp. I bought it from Larry in 2010, and I've been the owner and head coach ever since. Uh, we have four or five people in WWE right now. Uh, we have, of course, Sheamus is there. We have Nick Ogarelli. We have Damian Priest. We have Steve Cutler from the Forgotten Sons there. That was my first student to get signed back in 2013. And, of course, the bro, Matt Riddle. And over at Ring of Honor, we have Ian Riccoboni, the voice of Ring of Honor, came from the Monster Factory. We have Coast to Coast, LSG, and Shaheem Ali uh, went to the Monster Factory. So right now we got a good crop of students. We have some shows coming up October 26th, November 9th, December 14th. Uh, the, November 9th is our Turkey Slam, which is like our WrestleMania which I love it because, like, what we do is we have a couple matches that are, like, Survivor Series-style matches. And then what we do is the main event is a two-ring, side-by-side, uh, Royal Rumble-style battle royal. It'll start off with two people in one ring, two people in another ring, and every, 30, or every 60 seconds, two more people come down, and whoever wins uh, gets a championship match. So that's what's going on November 9th. So get your tickets to that. And if you're interested, subscribe, of course, comment, everything like that. And also, we have our own network, the MF Network. The MF Network. 
Uh, you can watch it on Roku and uh, Chromecast or on your mobile phone. And I think it's seven ninety nine a month. So just go ahead and subscribe to that. Uh, it is right at that 30-minute mark, and I like to keep it right to 30 minutes because I think that's the time when people start to tune out. So follow us on follow me on social media, the Danny Cage, on Twitter, the Danny Cage, and on Instagram, real Danny Cage, and on Facebook, the Danny Cage. All right, everybody. Again, I loved the show. Thought it was a huge improvement. And if they keep up this momentum, it's on, man. Sky's the limit. Love you guys. Be good. Have a good night.